Hi everyone, welcome to Solar Integrations. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be setting up a prepaid electricity meter monitor. Um, what, it's, what it will do is um, you load in the balance that you have on your prepaid meter and it will then keep a running total of what, how much uh, power you've got left on your meter based on your inverter's usage data. Um, this comes from a thread on the Power Forum. Um, Keller ZA posted a, um, a whole load of code there. Um, there are quite a few caveats to this and things that you need to be aware of. Um, it took me quite a long time to work out how to install this. Um, but uh, I'm not a programmer, so um, I think you can understand why. Um, I've gone through the whole thing and I'll be going through the whole installation process and the things to be aware of when you're setting this up. Um, I've also made a few changes to Keller ZA's um, uh, code that he put up there. So I hope you find it useful. And um, if you've got any comments, please let me know um, down below in the YouTube comments. And I appreciate your uh, like votes and your subscription. So we'll see you after the break. Okay, so the first thing to be aware of is that for this, for this uh, to work, your inverter is going to need to know about all the power that your house is using. So between your backup load and your on-grid home load, um, it'll have a daily consumption and that's the amount that it's going to be taking off the uh, prepaid meter balance. If you have any loads which are outside of the CT clamp, um, your inverter is not going to know about them and um, those are still going to come off your balance on your prepaid meter. So um, this is an, also an opportunity to check that all your loads are uh, capable of being uh, powered by your inverter, which is obviously where you want to be. Um, you're going to load your prepaid meter balance on there and it'll tell you what the remaining balance is. So you can then go and just double check that um, these, these figures are lining up. If they're not lining up by, and they're out by a lot, then you probably want to check if you have um, any devices which are using electricity and uh, aren't being powered by your inverter. Okay, so the second thing you need to be aware of is that the configuration file in Home Assistant um, if you, as default, you only have a configuration.yaml file. And what uh, there are, the configuration.yaml file starts getting really big and clumsy to look after. So what people have done in the past is they've split the configuration.yaml file out into scenes, scripts, um, secrets for storing your passwords. Um, and you can split all of those out to their own YAML files, which makes it a bit easier to manage. Um, what I think has caused a bit of confusion for a lot of people is that there is, um, there is now a way of, um, of setting up your configuration.yaml file with something called packages. And packages splits out a complete package, um, which can consist of... Um, of your um, scenes, your scripts, all of those types of things, but all in one little package. So um, for your uh, light automation, for example, maybe you've got scripts and new sensors and that type of thing. It, it clumps all of those together in one package. The problem is you can't run packages and split your YAML out into separate scenes and that type of thing. So you have to pick one or the other. I'm going to link to a video explaining the whole thing. Um, I split my YAML file out into my scripts and that type of thing. Um, if you want to do it in packages, um, you can do it in packages as well. Um, but you're going to just have to watch the videos and see how that works and um, figure that out because I'm not using packages. Okay, before I get going capturing the code on this, uh, to, um, modifying my YAML files and everything, what I want to do is we're going to be using the total grid import uh, entity from our inverter. And this will, this will change slightly depending on which integration you're using 
the name does change so to find that i'm going to go to developer tools and i'm going to put in there grid and i'm going to just do a search control f and look for total and that will give me where all the totals so that's my grid import day i don't want the day one i want the total one that's grid export grid import again okay so this is what my we're going to be using this this number over here this 3153 and that's going to be my uh, grid import uh, value and we're going to be storing that value and um, we're then going to be taking the current value and deducting that value off it so we can see how much that value has changed since uh, since we updated our counter and we're then going to deduct that from the amount from the balance that we've put in from our um, from our meter and that'll tell you how much power we've got left I hope that makes sense okay so now what I'm going to do is edit my configuration.yaml file um, if you haven't um, made any changes to your configuration.yaml file all of your um, all of your scripts scenes automations everything will appear in the configuration.yaml file what then starts happening though is your configuration.yaml file can start getting rather big so in the past people have um we've put any automations or scripts or scenes you can split them out into their own yaml files which makes um which makes things a bit easier to manage the other way you can do it is with packages um, I'm going to include a link to packages. Um, you can't do both ways at the same time. So this will really depend on your own configuration. If you're going to do packages, then you can just um, include all of these scripts into uh, well, the script and all of the settings for the entities and everything into one, um, into one uh, package file. Um, that's how uh, Killer ZA has got it over here. He's got this all in one package, and I think that's why a few people have got a bit uh, confused as to how they're supposed to be setting it up. Okay, so as I said, mine is uh, I've got a my my scripts are set up um, in their own YAML file, so I'm going to have to put part of this um, into my um, part of this. Uh, code is going to go into my configuration.yaml file and the other part's going to go into my scripts. Um, I'm just going to go through to this file which I'm going to upload, which I'll put in the show notes. Um, it's got the configuration.yaml part. Um, you can just cut this over here uh, and then paste it in. Um, it's very important you get this green tick over here. Um, if you're not getting that green tick, then it means that um, either you've got multiple uh, templates and this is going into the wrong section or um, you've maybe capturing the, the, the indents are wrong or something. What you can do is you can take this whole file and I'll include a, a link to yamllint.com, which is quite handy. It's a YAML file checker. You paste it in there. You go go and it'll tell you if there are any problems with it and if there are what line they're on and you can then um, get your yaml file working over there so that's pretty pretty handy to do that so that's my my configuration.yaml file updated now i just want to update my scripts.yaml file and put in the script part that i need to which is this over here um, this is the part which is going to update my um, my counters when I push the button so that um, it'll start counting how much power I've used since it was last updated. Um, so I'm going to just copy that. Let's go back in here. And um, that's basically it over there. Okay, it's got a green tick, which means it's good to go. Save it. Settings and um, what you can do before you reboot is over here there's um, a you can check your file 
in settings system is it under developer tools yaml yes check configuration sorry about that check configuration configuration will not prevent home assistant from starting okay so i can go settings restart restart home assistant okay so now what i want to do i'm just going to create a, a quick dashboard for my prepaid data um you could obviously just add this into your existing um one of your existing dashboards if you want to um there i've got prepaid and so i've got a prepaid dashboard and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy my um, card which i created here you, you can obviously customize these for whichever way you want to um, but um, this is just a good starting point if you're just getting into this stuff um, i'm just going to add it as yaml code and i'm going to paste it in over there like that and go save done okay so we've now got this the only thing i don't like is this slider over here which isn't i would much rather be able to type a number in there so I'm pretty sure that you can change this in the file editor and if anybody knows what I'm not doing right then please let me know but I did f find a workaround for it um, if I go into settings and I go into helpers and um, it's this this one over here which I want to change from a slider to a um, to a, a number where I can just update the number. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this one out. I've just renamed it to one, so it's not going to be used there anymore. Number, and let's call it um, prepaid units. Um, prepaid units. Okay, and minimum value zero, maximum value, I don't know, whatever whatever you want 9999 and we're going to create it as an input field step size one and it'll be in kilowatt hours and go create that let's just double check what it is called input number prepaid units okay that's going to be perfect so now i should be able to just reboot this restart this home assistant and it should now have a number field there if everything goes according to plan let's just have a look prepaid yes okay so now i can type in there 327 and i go update run it okay and i've now got um i've used zero since it was updated my balance is 327 kilowatt hours and it's got this little meter over here if i want to change the the settings on this meter i can change this over here and i can make it um yellow becomes uh at 30 and red becomes at 20. okay and green is from um, 30, 31 okay so when it gets down to 31 it's going to turn yellow and when it gets down to 20 it's going to turn red that definitely looks better okay so the last thing i want to do is get a notification when the, this power drops below say 30 kilowatt hours so i'll do that um, in settings automations and create an automation create a new automation um, i can either add it through the um through the gui over here um, you add a trigger 
or I can add it in YAML. I'll include some YAML code for the automation um, in, my, in my text file. Um, you guys are going to need to check this out. I haven't had time to check it out. So if it's not working, um, then you, please let me know in the comments. Um, it should... Um, check the numeric state of the sensor dot prepaid units left when it reaches when it drops below 30 then send a uh, notification service and warning prepaid electricity units are low only 30 kilowatt hours remaining so I'm going to save that let's rename it okay and um, I'll have to reboot and then that should be it. Um, I hope that helps you guys with the installation. I did see a few people struggling with it. Um, this prepaid units thing I think is much better being able to put it in as a number. So uh, let, me know, let me know what you guys think of the video and um, I'll speak to you in the comments. Cheers until next time. Oh, if anybody's got any suggestions of any other videos you'd like, you guys would like to see then please let me know.